Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome back to another quick-fire dungeon guide for the bosses within the Drowned City of Scala. This is a brand new dungeon added to the game in patch 4.1 as part of the main scenario. This dungeon is located under Lock Seld in the Locks and contains three vastly varied bosses, which are great fun. The first of these, after a section of trash pools, is Kelpie. Kelpie is a mutated horse drowned in the salt water, so expect the fight to be full of watery, salty goodness. First, you might notice the edges of the room have this red zone pulsating around them. This is a bad area to stand in, so don't enter this red area. It does damage to you that will stack, increasing how much damage you take from water, which is pretty bad considering every attack in here is water-based. This horse's next set of moves are deliberately misnamed to trick you into failing the true mechanic. When the horse uses Hydro Push, you need to actually stand on the far side of the room close to the edge of the red zone, as the horse will actually pull you into where he's standing, which will hurt if you get pulled into the wall. The same can be said for the second of these two abilities, Hydro Pull, which actually pushes you away into the sides of a room, which you'll need to go close to the boss's side to avoid getting badly hurt. Other than these two main abilities, the boss has one other ability to be aware of that spawns a water ball on a target, and conversely multiple of these balls on people later throughout the fight. If you receive this ball on your head, you must kite this around a room, avoiding water pools on the floor, all the while following the hydro push and pull mechanics. The boss also has a series of AoE abilities that cannot be avoided, that must be healed through, and a tank buster that doesn't really hurt. The tank buster itself is barely noticeable, and honestly didn't require enough healing to really mention in this guide. Next up we have boss number 2. This is the old one. This boss deploys plenty of conal attack, which you can avoid much easier by staying closer to the boss to allow you to move out of them faster. He also throws AoE circles under people's feet at range, so move from these immediately, they hit fairly hard. The main deal with this boss is that he will eventually summon multiple adds, clones of himself essentially. These are chained to the boss that need to be killed fast before the boss uses a self-destruct ability. This does damage based on the amount of adds still up when the cast finishes, for this reason we need to nuke them down. Later on in the fight, past the first bomb phase, the next bomb phases will actually transform your party into Spriganads. You cannot attack in Spriggan form and must instead drop bombs using the only button on your bars in this form near the adds to destroy them. Essentially doing the same as in the usual bomb phase, but with the Spriggan bombs instead. Other than that, the fight is nice and simple and quite enjoyable to be honest, and I wish we could always be Spriggan. Maybe in the next game. And lastly, we come to the last boss of the instance, Roderick Poisontong, a man that has been turned into a Chimera-type creature over decades. The first thing to know about on this boss is that he has two abilities that are not actually telegraphed, the first of which is signalled by a message that will pop up on screen, whereupon he will say one of two phrases, either raising his claws or raising his tail. If he raises his claws, do not be in front of the boss to avoid damage. If he says he's raising his tail, you need to not be behind the boss at all. Failing to do these properly obviously hurts, but also applies a stack of vulnerability debuff to your character. Secondly, the boss will use an ability that you will see a eye symbol appear on him. This, like any other eye mechanic on other bosses, means to look away from the boss immediately with your character. Failure to do so will make you gain the confused debuff, and the AI will use your character to damage other players, which is suboptimal. The second of the untelegraphed abilities is actually an eye beam. Occasionally the boss will face players, even though the tank will still have amnity. You need to simply move sideways from where you were standing when he faced you, otherwise you will be hit by a line AoE eye beam that hurts quite significantly. The next few abilities are essentially taken from Lakshmi. He places an AoE centered around a player, and you need to move away from other players with this. He will sometimes use an AoE proximity explosion, and you will need to run away from his circle detonation point to reduce the damage this does as usual with this type of attack. Finally, two more abilities to look out for that happen simultaneously. The first is to place a cross-shaped AoE on someone's feet. This can be moved so that it doesn't hit anyone with the lines. At the same time, another player will be given a donut-shaped purple circle AoE. This can be taken far away or you can try to align the central safe zone inside the circle with other players. Nine times out of ten, it's better to simply just move far away that it doesn't overlap at all. 
And that's essentially the whole fight. Towards the end of the fight, the latter ability is used in conjunction with the earlier abilities to make for much more varied patterns, but essentially that's it in a nutshell. That brings us to the end of the Drowned City of Scala boss guide. Thank you kindly for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please throw me a like below, and I'll see you next time.